Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's product school talk. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. So we teach about product management, coding, data and blockchain, and we have 14 campuses worldwide. Uh, we have an awesome guest presenting today. I'd like to introduce Alex Alwan. Alex will talk about um, an introduction to A-B testing and we'll, I think we'll get to learn a lot about best product and marketing strategies for your business, um, adopt a culture of testing, everything from website copy to engagement emails to Facebook ads, and learn through a real SAAS product experiment. So Alex is a technical product manager. He has over nine years of experience in web and mobile product development, analytics, and growth in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and the Middle East. So welcome, Alex. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having, a, having me. Can you hear me? Woohoo. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, I can hear you. You can hear me? All is good? Awesome. Yes, all is good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, so let me start then by sharing my screen. Maybe you, maybe you just need to stop sharing your screen. All right, yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me do this quickly. And uh, all right, here we are. So yes, as you said, it's uh, an introduction to a practical introduction to A/B testing, and um, a quick uh, introduction about me. I'm a senior product manager, uh, and uh, now I. Uh, I work for Fox, uh, digital group uh, in the optimization and analytics uh, um, uh, team. Uh, I work on the running and setting up the experimentation for various number of mobile applications to stream uh, Fox content. I work in other companies and uh, like Rackspace and Airbrake. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very data driven and I'm interested in uh, growth, data science, and Clash Royale as well. Um, so, what is A B testing? Uh, uh, one example of uh, A B tests that we see all the time, for example, on Facebook applications application on your phone. Facebook keeps changing the app design. You see, these are the uh, the menu button, uh, and you see how they have changed from uh, top to bottom. They, these all all these changes happened only like in eight months. So you can imagine that actually design work never ends. Uh, uh, Facebook keeps changing and tracks down the best results that come from these various of of designs. Another very relevant example is, is Netflix. Netflix keeps changing the show's thumbnails. Uh, you see here, for example, Stranger Things. We see the, the cover picture that changes from one user to another. It, actually, it even changes from one day to another, depending on which picture gets more visits and more, uh, more clicks. Uh, so Stranger Things, you, we can see so many thumbnail, so many pictures that could be used, and they they keep they keep testing one versus another, and which one gets more clicks. And this is automated by Netflix. So, um, A/B testing simply is is the idea that we have one page, uh, and we want to make some changes. In this example, we we changed the background picture and 50% uh, of the traffic will go to the, to one version and 50% of the traffic will go to the other version and uh, and the goal here to see which which uh, which version would actually make better results uh, and here we, what we are testing is that is the clicks on the button the green button uh, below which is like start for example the free trial so here, for example, we've seen that a change from the old variation to the new variation have improved the click-through rate on that button by 4.78%. And now you, we all can dig deep into why this happened. 
Is it uh, because uh, what kind of customers we are targeting, their behavior, where they are, etc. But really what we care about here is the data. Uh, what we care about are the numbers, which number makes more sense. It's not about what we like. So A-B testing is actually, is about observing what people do on my website or mobile app. Uh, that, that's, that's my goal is to, uh, is to see what they do do not what they say because when you ask a customer about something they might tell you oh i like this or that but when it comes to a b testing i give them this and that in two variation and i see their, beh their behavior so where do we start when it comes to a b testing uh, a lot of product managers tend to uh, use a b testing uh, in, in their uh, job but uh, some might say, okay, I would think about an A-B test and go and implement it uh, immediately or directly. Uh, my approach to, to A-B testing is, is uh, slightly different. I start from the user funnel. It's very important for any product to, to understand the funnel, the, the steps that the customers take from the moment they arrive to our product, uh, to our website, till they use it and they start paying. So for example, here we see this funnel. Uh, someone visit the homepage, then explore the, the site. For example, they click on the pricing page or they click on uh, the blog, etc., And then they register and then they make payment. And as you see, the funnel gets smaller, uh, more people uh, like these, let's say 100 people visit the homepage, some of them explore the site, some of them register, and some of them only make the payment. Uh, some of them might cancel before they make the payment. Another example of a user funnel is someone click an ad, visit a landing page, then register, and then make a payment. The truth is most of the products we use on a daily basis, they have so many user funnels, different scenarios, a different paths where customers can go through. They might come from advertising, they might come from a blog post, they might just visit the website immediately, and then their behavior on the website might change. But it's very important to have, to, to have at least the two to three main funnels of, of my website. Here, here's an example of, of the user funnel for a SaaS product, a software as a service, which means that it's a software that uh, people can use online and they pay in, in a monthly basis, a subscription to use that software. Uh, for example, a sales, Salesforce as, as a SaaS product. So they visit the homepage, they explore the site, they select a plan, for example, a free plan or a cheap plan or maybe an enterprise plan. And then they register or do the setup and then they make a, a payment. <clears throat> and then there is the, the repeat factor, which means that it's, a, it's SaaS products are subscri subscription based, which means uh, I pay every week or every month or every year. Here's an example. Airbrake.io is an example of, of a SaaS product that, as you see here, uh, 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 this is a product, a software that helps uh, developers find bugs and errors in their, in their code. So it's entirely online uh, software that you use online uh, and you access online and you pay for in a, on a monthly basis. If you go to to the pricing page on Airbrake, you see multiple plans. The essential for that's uh, for fifty nine dollars a month, and then start up slightly more expensive, and then the growth more expensive, and then the enterprise. Uh, and and if you if you click on uh, sorry, if you click on any of these plan, if you click on start now or try free now, you go to a registration. Uh, form where you complete the, the, the sign up form. 
Now, uh, so this is exactly the funnel for, for Airbrake. Visit the homepage, pricing page, select a plan, set up and then make payment and repeat. It's very important to, to look at these numbers. Now, if 1,000 people visit the homepage, let's assume that 900 of them have visited the pricing page and then 500 of them selected the plan, 200 completed the setup, 50, uh, 50 people, 50 of them uh, made the payment and 40 kept paying the payment. So they, they did not cancel after the first payment, they actually have, have repaired, repeated making the payment. What we need to do is actually calculate the conversion rates between these steps. So between the between visit the homepage to visit pricing page, we can see that 90% uh, here to on the right, we see that 90% of them uh, visit the pricing page. 55.56 of the 900 selected the plan. 40% of the 500 who selected the plan have completed the setup. And 25% of these who completed setup made the payment. And then 80% of who made the first payment kept making payments after that. Now, this is very, very important for any software company, especially software companies, but it's also important for any company, really, any business. It's to calculate the conversion rates because this is the, the point where we define opportunities, where we look at, uh, at areas where we can optimize. So, for example, here we look at this area. We can see that 40% from people who select plan, complete the setup, only 40%. So here we see an opportunity. We can think about a hypothesis. We say, we need to do something in order to improve the 40% who complete the setup. The second, uh, th that was the first, the fir the, so the first step was to look at the user funnel, define, de define the, uh, uh, calculate the conversion rates and then define an opportunity. The second would be to design the experiment. So for example, to, 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 uh, to improve the registration completion rate from 40% to something, uh, we, we're going to look at the sign up page this is the let's assume that this is the current sign up page and we what we want is to design a new sign up page that is not one page only it's actually two pages so the current is one big page with two tables one for account information and one for billing information and the second one splits this one page into two pages. This is one page form and this is two page form. This is what we call in A-B testing a control version. And this is what we call a variant version, which means this is what the control is what we have now is the current variant is something we're not still we're not 100% sure about and we wanna test if it's gonna work or not. Here, we have, we, we already know that there is 18% completion rate. 18% who, who 18% uh, of, of people who visit this uh, page actually completed. And let's see what this page has. This page, this form that has two pages, actually 22% of people who visit this sign up, sign up uh, form complete. Uh, the two form the two pages which is very interesting because when it's one page it was only 18 percent and but if when we turn the sign up into two pages it's 22 percent one of the reasons that we analyzed uh, at airbreak at that time is that maybe the reason was uh, and these by the way they're not the real numbers they're similar numbers but there was an improvement there the, the reason was uh, that we analyzed is that when we ask for the billing information the first thing when you see the billing information as a customer you might 
not go for it but if you if you actually submit your basic information like name and email and then you go next to the next step and then you see the credit card information you might be more motivated to to complete it as you have already finished half of the work so from 18 percent to 22 percent that is 22.2 improvement that's 22.2 percent that that's the improvement rate that we have achieved which is great so this is the second step after defining the the conversion rate and the opportunity is to design the experiment one very important uh, step is to set the metrics now which metrics should we use uh, there there is a metric called click through rate and there is some some uh, another metric called click through probability so a lot of people use the click through rate which me which means uh, on this page uh, how many clicks does this button get? So both click-through rate and click-through probability, we can define them as how many clicks this button, for example, uh, uh, if 100% if people visited this page, how many clicks uh, on the button? The difference is that click-through rate, you can calculate by the number of, in this case, sign-ups over the, the, the page visits. Uh, but the difference is click through rate is the unique signups over the unique page visits. And this is very important because if someone comes to the page and sign ups multiple times uh, and the click through rate, the CTR will be high. Although this user have signed up multiple times and what is meaningful for me is only one sign up per, per customer or per visit. And also, some some one person might visit so many times. It's it's important to get the unique uh, page visit. And this is an example of why this is very to differentiate between these two concepts is very important. For example, here uh, on this uh, in, uh, a web page that uh, there's here's the number of visits for each of these customers, and the, the number of conversions from each of these customers. For example, let's say the conversion here is the number of clicks on a button. So uh, customer number two, uh, she, uh, she visited once, but she clicked five times on a button. Uh, customer number one, he visited once and clicked zero times, didn't, didn't click at all. If the CTR would be uh, 2.5 because it's the number of conversion five over two two customers five over two is is 2.5 but the ctp the click through probability is actually 0 0.5 because it's we only these five conversions we're gonna count as one conversion because we need the unique per unique the unique conversion per unique customer which means it's it's one conversion over two visits to customers, and that's why it's 0 0.5. So if we don't pick the right metric, the meaningful metric, we might actually get a misleading uh, uh, metric or, or data. And that is very important when it comes to, uh, to, to A-B testing. So here's another, let's say, uh, 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 exercise select the best metric for each experiment. Here's an experiment. We have three experiments and we have multiple metrics. So, and here's multiple metrics that we're gonna use to, to measure the success of that experiment. This experiment, for example, update the content on pricing page, remove credit card info from sign up form, and another experiment to change the color of check pricing button on home page so metric uh, ct uh, the the click through rate on a button on the button the probability of completing the registration ctp on the button and probability probability of starting the registration process so what i'm going to do is go going quickly on this because we don't have much time we usually spend like 15 minutes uh, in a workshop sitting to to go through this but 
it's important to, to see how, for example, to update the content on pricing page, we're going to use probability of starting the registration pr process. That's what we care about. Uh, remove credit card info from sign up page. Here we, we see the completion of, of, of probability of completing the registration. And then here to change if we ch if the test where we change the, the, the button, do we care about CTR or CTP? Similar to the, to the slide before, do we care about do we care if, if a user clicked 10 times or 100 times on a button? That, that would be misleading. So what we care about is actually a click through probability on that button. And by the way, you, uh, the, the slides are already shared on my account on SlideShare. So you can uh, take a thorough look at them. Uh, there's also like more difficult metrics to calculate, like, uh, like lifetime value. I want to know, for example, the customers that come to my website and keep paying for five years. Well, that, that is almost impossible to know because if they register today and I'm running the A-B test for two weeks, let's say, I'm not going to be able to, to know the lifetime value because they, they will keep using maybe my, my, my product for five years and I can't know the future. Are they going to cancel? Are they going to downgrade, upgrade, etc.? cetera? Uh, customer satisfaction is also could be a, a, a hard or or a difficult metric to calculate. Uh, virality, how viral my product is, how many, uh, how, many fr how many customers are inviting their friends to join me. And by the way, virality, it's difficult metrics, metric, but it's also possible. I'm gonna go through this slide quickly. Uh, this is an equation to calculate what is called viral growth factor which is that the percentage, uh, it's X by Y by Z. X is percentage of users who invite other people. Y is the average num uh, number of people who they invite. And Z is the percentage of users who accepted the invitation. So I would, I would recommend if, if you maybe look at the slides uh, after uh, this webinar and maybe look at this, but the idea here is that some uh, complicated, more complicated metrics that require multiple uh, uh, smaller metrics and then put them in a big equation in order to see uh, the final result. But uh, what, what, with, the, with, the, with the new tools and with better big data tracking, uh, we actually can do that. So in this case, if we have these numbers, actually value growth factor is 1.5, which means for every customer we have, they are bringing 1.5 new customers. They are inviting 1.5 friends to use my customers. In other words, for every two customers, they bring three new customers, which is great. If viral growth factor is zero, which, mean, which means that my customers don't bring new, their friends, if my customer, if uh, my growth factor is one, which means every customer brings an, a, a friend to, to my product. It's very important also in A-B testing to clean the traffic that I use for that for the A-B test. And to do that, I need to look at spam uh, traffic, uh, internal traffic from my team, for example, who use the, the product all the time. Also, it's important to segment the traffic. Sometimes we segment by platform. Uh, when I run an A-B test on the web, it's different than iOS, different than Android, different than TV uh, application. Uh, so maybe by platform or by traffic source, people who come from Facebook are different than come organically from Google. Uh, by registration status, which means are they uh, uh, are they active, uh, uh, are they new, are they old, uh, or user active status, are they active users, or, or uh, do they use my product every day, or are they uh, maybe use it every, every month or every year, or maybe they abandoned my product, but they are still customers. They, these are, the, 
all these segments have different user experience and different behavior and therefore I should be careful when I run an A-B test. So I need to know which segment I'm targeting. So <clears throat> collecting data is very important to know how long should I run an experiment. It's uh, quickly here, uh, the goal is to be certain, uh, which in other words, how I need to get statistically significant uh, data. Uh, for example, if after two weeks of running the A-B test, uh, the data uh, was significant that uh, this variant will, will, uh, is, is performing better than the better than the other uh, 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 other uh, variant then uh, I would keep only the the good one and stop or pause the other variant so the idea is to keep it running until we have such sickly significant data so Here's a, here's a very interesting tool called, uh, from Kiss Metrics. Kiss Metrics tool, you go here and you add the number of visitors on, uh, on, 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 the, on the variant number A, for example, 1,000, and the number of overall conversion. The conversion could be completed the sign up or clicked on a button, and you can see the conversion rate. Uh, at, uh, here it's like 11.8. And then the same for variant B, how many of them have converted. Uh, the important thing here is to look at how certain, uh, uh, how certain these numbers are. So in this case, 50%, 55% uh, certain that variant B, uh, uh, that uh, the changes in the variation, uh, variation B converted 2% better than and variation A, and and therefore, uh, therefore, uh, therefore, fifty five percent certain. Now, uh, on the other hand, different numbers here, we can see that ninety nine percent certain that that this the numbers are good. Usually, industry standard is ninety five percent or ninety percent uh, certainty. Uh, with with the data, with the, with the results, would be enough to 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 actually stop one of the variant and keep the other variant working. Uh, I actually want to stop here. One one last thing is that, for example, if we, I have test number one and I run it for six months, that's a very long period, and I might get like fifteen percent improvement, but I might do it in a different way. If I run a test number one for two months or, or two weeks even, I get 10% improvement. And test two then after that, another test on the same thing, and I get 5% improvement, also for a shorter period of time. And then another test, that is better than, it's like running shorter uh, experiments, an A-B test, that would be better than uh, running uh, one long experiment. And the, in the second case with shorter uh, tests, I get 10 plus five plus 15, and that is 30% improvement while in the first one, I only got 15. And that's just an example to give you an idea of long versus short testing period. And that would be it in my, uh, from my side. Um, and uh, I would love to, I don't know if I have like one or two questions uh, I can go through. I know we are over time. So even if you say no, that's fine. Okay. Well, we do have a lot of questions. We have a lot of people tuning in. Okay. And so I've been trying to pick out what I think would be the best question. So the first one is from Purba Nagar. And she asks, how to decide whether to use A-B testing versus usability testing between two designs? That is a very good question. And uh, uh, usability, when we say usability testing, it's a, it's, a broad, uh, it's a broad term. So we need to really understand what, what we mean by usability testing because companies define it in a different way. Some people, uh, some companies, you consider it as user group testing, which means I bring some groups in a, in a, in a room and uh, I show them different, uh, I, I ask them to use 
uh, one group to use one 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 um, uh, one version and the other group to use another version or I, uh, eye tracking like where they are looking or click tracking or heat maps so usability this thing is is is, is, is broader uh, uh, term than a b testing a b testing is very narrow to where i have different uh, two or more uh, variants of one thing and uh, i have specific metrics and data i'm, I'm collecting so uh, it, it, uh, so when we go, I believe that A-B test is, is an easy way to, to test, especially if I have so many customers. But if I have, if I'm early, uh, I'm in, in early stage and I don't have that many customers that and visits to my website that will actually provide me with uh, statistically, statistically significant data, then maybe usability uh, and offline traditional like groups and eye, eye tracking and like different kind of usability study would be a good idea. Wonderful, great. So we only have time for a few more. So I'll just say Purva also asked, do these tools work for mobile app A-B testing as well that you did? And then that's a yes or no, yes, they do? Yes, definitely. I will add that there's a different kind of setup tools like Optimizely and Visual Website Optimizer, they have, that you can integrate to your web and they, they have SDKs that you can integrate to your mobile as well. Amazing. Um, what other tools, Kenneth asks, what other tools besides KISS metrics do you recommend if you just had a few? Um, well, I just mentioned, for example, Optimizely and Visual Website Optimizer. These are the yes. one of the two most important but also Google, Google Analytics now has a, a new uh, a feature for A-B testing. Um, uh, I use, personally, I use Optimizely and Visual Site Optimizer. Awesome, thank you. And then we have two more, so we'll try and squeeze in both um, that I think are really relevant. Uh, Joyti says, could you recommend a reading source to learn more about A-B testing, good for as per today's industry standards? Sure. Anything else off your head? Yeah, okay. Check my slides on slideshare.com. <laughs> uh, you can just uh, search Alex Elwan. Uh, uh, well, uh, first of all, product school has different different uh, um, courses, one in data and analytics course, and, and it goes through A-B testing as well. That, that when it comes to courses, uh, but books or oh, books, uh, I know that Optimizely, they have a whole knowledge base that you can go through uh, tutorials and you can go through videos. Uh, the same for Visual Website Optimizer. I, I really learned a lot from their uh, knowledge uh, and support uh, se uh, sections. Uh, I cannot remember like specific book uh, I'm more, I'm more like into online courses like on Udemy. You can find and do the city and uh, and uh, a lot of videos and certificates on Optimize Day as well. Amazing. Okay, and the last one is uh, Sonia asks which metrics to use to test display ads for lead generation. Do you have any recommendations? Display uh, ads, ads for lead generation. For lead generation. Yeah, it, it depends where you're running them. Uh, if you're running them on AdWords, well, AdWords by definition, they have integrated A-B testing features. So when you create different campaigns and different group, ad groups and different ads, that's by definition, you are actually testing them. So if you have the tracking set up correct for, for these campaigns, you are already, you can just go to the campaign and duplicate and change the name and then tr track the changes between these campaigns or ad groups or ads. Uh, the same for Facebook. You can create the same, duplicate the same campaign and or same ad group and and see the differences. Uh, other than that, it's like if you are, for example, just talking to. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, like trying to promote anything, but it's like on TechCrunch and you want just display some banners, each of these banners have a link and this link should connect with your analytics system in-house 
depending it depends on what what analytics system you use uses google analytics then you give you put utm uh, uh, properties tags on that link that you use for that banner and therefore you can see in the report the different uh, the the, uh, the different results you get from each banner amazing well thank you so much alex for presenting today and thank you everyone else for joining us. We had 192 people watching at one point. So that was amazing, a lot of engagement. Awesome. Yeah, and to get more info on any of our courses and upcoming events, just go to productschool.com. Uh, we have locations all over. Um, I have to list them, so bear with me. San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Santa Monica, Seattle, Chicago, Denver, New York, LA, Orange County, Austin, Boston, Boulder, Toronto, and London. Um, so if you're located near campus, just make sure you stop by one of our weekly events every Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we also have online events, as you know, here and on our Slack channel. Um, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. And yeah, just look up Product School and you'll find us there. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day. And Alex, thank you so much. Uh, no problem. Second day on the new job and able to make it work. So thank you so much. No problem. We'll have be a in good touch. one. Yes. Okay. Have a Take good care. one. Bye-bye. Ciao.